now from CBS 4 News. This is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Welcome to Facing South Florida. I'm Jim DeFeedy, and later in the show, we will have my investigation into why classrooms in the Miami Dade County School District have fallen into disrepair cracks in the walls, holes in the floor, leaking roofs. The investigation is quite revealing. We talk about safe spaces all the time in Miami Dade County Public Schools, but what about a safe, just a physically safe structure for our children to learn? If children are not safe, they do not learn, and we're, we're walking through infrastructure failures, and it's just, it, to me, it's egregious. It was completely unacceptable. But we begin with Lauren Book, the Democratic leader of the Florida Senate. She recently introduced a bill on protecting animals in Florida. But there was one line in the 35-page bill that caused an uproar. It would have made it illegal for motorists to allow dogs to stick their heads out of the windows of moving cars. No good deed goes unpunished, right? That's correct. That is exactly my sentiment about this entire bill, which really is an incredible product. If you think of the totality of the 35 pages that this bill is, it's a rewrite of the animal abuse statute. It has an animal abuse registry in it. It bans testing on an cosmetic testing on animals, the banning of declawing of cats. But people really, really want to talk about um, the safe transport of dogs. And how did that idea come to you? I know some veterinarians, from what I understand, approached you and said, look, this is a real issue. We see dogs who are injured because they're either in the back of pickup trucks or they're sticking their, their, their heads out of windows. Talk to me about how this got into the bill and then the explosion that occurred when, when the press sort of honed in on that aspect of it. So the, again, filing it under no good deed goes unpunished. There were a lot of different bills uh, that were moving in their way, coming to be filed. Um, and we decided to have one unified bill. And so we talked to every animal group, every advocate, the veterans, uh, the veterinarians, and put everything into one product to move it along in the process to make it easier and to have one unified piece, whether it was the non tethering of dogs again to the banning of testing of cosmetics on animals. It was a, a, a well rounded product, as you know, as an intellectual exercise, we can put everything into one piece that everybody brought to the table. I'm a process driven person. And I believe that maybe sometimes people forget in the Ron DeSantis world that we live in that just because you say something is going to become law doesn't mean that that is the final product that actually becomes law. Uh, and there is a process to this place. Um, but it was very, very clear very quickly on that the safe transport of animals and allowing dogs to put their heads out of windows um, was important to Floridians. Uh, look, it is a dangerous practice. We know that. Veterinarians have given us stats on stats on stats. Eight days ago, a cute little white dog named Sophie jumped out of the car and almost got hit by a Mack truck in Washington, D.C. I can give you stats. I can give you facts. But I understand that the people very loudly have spoken that this one sentence in a 35-page bill should not be included. And far be it from me, who is now the Cruella de Vil, apparently, of the Florida Senate, should stop people and my own dogs from putting their heads out of the window. So when and if the bill is heard, I can assure you that that is a piece that probably won't find its way in the final product. People are very serious about their guns, their dogs. And so I, you know, here, who am I to stop people? Just invest in some doggles, okay? Like, let's make sure that the bugs don't get in their eyes. All right, so let's, uh, you mentioned guns. That's a good place to, to now pivot. Let's talk about the fact that Florida is steamrolling ahead with the idea of permitless carry. In other words, no need to get a concealed weapons permit any longer, that if you wanna have a gun, just tuck a gun in the back of your pants or throw it in your purse and head out for the day. I don't think that I can think of a more dangerous piece of legislation. Um, it is, and if you watched at all this week, uh, some of my Democratic colleagues did a wonderful job of painting the picture about why this is such a dangerous piece. You have law enforcement officers that say this is a dangerous thought, a dangerous thing to do. You have to have training. And for some of the proponents of, of, of the training to say oh, it's in Nevada, it's not that good, 
in the free state of Florida? Why don't you create a better product for training? Why would we do away with training? It is dangerous, it is scary, and there is rumor and talk of perhaps a floor amendment on the House to bring open carry. You saw a lot of conversation in both the House and the Senate hearing where there are people that are continuing to push, even a member of the Florida Senate, um, Senator Angolia, who talked about maybe we can bring an amendment to allow for open carry. I can't think of a more scary situation for law enforcement, for our communities. It's dangerous and it's wrong. What's behind it? What's the driving force you believe in wanting to enact this piece of legislation? Well, it's no secret that our governor is uh, thinking about and has aspirations for higher office. And I believe that he is doing anything and everything that he can to create a platform for himself. And the sad thing is that Floridians are going to have to live with the aftermath of his aspirations. That is a very, very dangerous thought. And while maybe the thought of permitless open carry doesn't scare you or just permitless carry how about the all but all but abortion ban that people are talking about and has been circulating you have the speaker of the house in the last 24 to 48 hours talking about uh and basically an all-out ban and looking at what that may be you're talking about the death penalty you're talking about the complete destruction of traditional public schools as we know it the ruining completely of unions across the street uh, across the state with paycheck protection i i, I mean you had well, a let's, let's break some of that down let's break some of that down let's you, you know, it, let's talk about, let's start with abortion. Uh, right now, the state moved down to a 15-week abortion ban. That was from 24 weeks that had previously been. So the last last time the legislature was together, they they lowered the, the number of weeks that a woman can have the ability to have an abortion with no exceptions for rape and incest after 15 weeks. You believe that that is likely to now come down to to what? The Speaker of the House is talking about an outright abortion ban. Others are talking about maybe a fetal heart rate, you know, which could take it down to six or 10 weeks. Where do we, we think heard, that this is going to land? We've heard 10 weeks. We've heard six weeks. It is a very, very, very scary place in time. Um, let's be clear. Concede. Let's be clear. When, if you lower, you know, the abortion down to six weeks, for all intent and purposes, that's a ban. That's Most, a ban. Let's be very clear. No, that they're pregnant, right? That is a ban. That is an all-out ban. You and you and I, the a few times before when I was on the show, we talked about the menstrual cycle. You don't even know you're pregnant most times at six weeks. It is an all-out ban. Let's call it what it is. And beyond that, you and I have had many conversations about the rape and incest exemption. And there's, you know, the conversation of well, it's really important we have a rape and incest exemption. With all due respect to this process, that is to make the right look less like the monsters that they are. They passed this ban while I stood on the floor of the Florida Senate and talked about being gang raped as a young girl and looked at me in the face and voted to not have the exemption. That is what they did. They have to carry that. They have. And to act as though they're doing something big by giving an exemption. Why don't we talk about the two physician requirement, where in most places in the state, you can't find one doctor to tell you that you needed to have an abortion. The other thing I think that people are failing to understand and realize, and I've had several calls from doctors in my district in South Florida alone with women who are having very, very, very real life, real time consequences from their health care being blocked by the government. And what does that mean and what does that look like? There are two women in particular, both were um, went through IVF several rounds, wanted, wanted, wanted pregnancies. In one case, the, the woman was 18 weeks pregnant when her water broke and the pregnancy was no longer viable. She went to a hospital very, very in, in South Florida um, and was told that the pregnancy was no longer viable, but unfortunately, because she was past the 15 weeks, she could not have an abortion. She needed to wait because there was no imminent risk to her health to go home and develop sepsis before they would take the pregnancy. What world do we live in 
that we are telling women to go home and develop sepsis, what kind of third world care as the government stepped in and told women what they can and cannot do with their bodies and put them at harm's, in harm's way to receive health care that they deserve. In another case, a woman at 16 weeks, same sex situation, IVF, wanted pregnancy, again, Unfortunately, the pregnancy was no longer viable, had to go home. In this case, though, this woman went home and her pregnancy began to expel itself. There were major complications. She had to have an emergency hysterectomy and will never be able to have children again. That is what the Republicans are doing with their reckless, with their reckless policies and what the governor is doing to destroy women and, and, and our great state. When is it when is it okay for government to step in and tell people and tell doctors how to care for their patients? I'm curious to get your take on the entire issue of African American studies and AP course that the governor sort of objected to and and that entire process of how that played out. Give me your perspective on all that. I first of all again another complete disregard for Floridians, for groups of people, and for what's right and sensible. What human being will stand up in front of people and say an entire culture, community, has no educational value? In what world is that acceptable or appropriate? Why is that okay? And why is it then that the legislature will trip over itself at this point to create policy in a rushed and harried manner to suit the narrative that he wants to create to run for president? It's dangerous, it's scary, it's wrong. We, you and I have talked many times and I have said this, it's something that my grandfather told me. First, they came for the socialists, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a socialist. And then they came for the trade unionists, and I didn't speak out because I wasn't a trade unionist. And then they came for me, and there was nobody to stand for me. And I think it's important that people understand they are coming, whether it's a woman's right to choose, African-American history, culture, people. Uh, they're talking about uh, getting a complete ban on gender-affirming care, um, LGBTQ rights. This is not stopping. It is not something that we should be okay with, and people need to be paying attention. Well, wait, wait a second, but let me maybe push back. That's what elections are supposedly for. And we had an election, and he won on this agenda, you know, by one and a half million votes, 19 point victory, one of the largest victories we've ever seen in a governor's race here in the state of Florida. Maybe he's more in touch with where the people of Florida are than you are. And, and that may be true, but that's not what I'm hearing from my constituents, and that's not what my colleagues um, in our caucus are hearing from theirs. And I would say, too, we have Republicans reaching out to us from all over the state that the vision and values of this governor and this legislature aren't necessarily what they believe in. And, and, and by the way, just because somebody makes a statement does not mean that that should fall in line and create and drive policy for all things. Again, I think universally we've seen that not having an exemption for rape and incest is not supported or appropriate. Yes, I believe, and I have heard many, many times from my Republican colleagues, this election was an edict and we are going to go in and do what we want to do in the things that we believe in. But that doesn't mean that it is along every line of what is right or good for the people of the state of Florida. These big red meat issues that are gonna help this pre this governor run for president, it's not gonna help Charlotte, who lives in my district, who still can't afford property insurance and could lose her house. It's not gonna help those two women, certainly, who will, one, will never be able to have children again, and the other who had to have a harrowing health crisis to be taken care for appropriately in a first world country. The uh, Let's talk about immigration, the flights uh, bill for a second. Uh, obviously, I know uh, Senator Pizzo recently pulled his lawsuit, judge found that it was moot because essentially the governor violated the law by the immigration flights. The legislature came in, rewrote the law so that what he did wouldn't be illegal anymore. I think that there are very serious issues as it relates to immigration. But I don't think that giving the governor a blank check to have private flights that could pay for kids to go to school or our constituents to have the things that they need to be sent from 
Phoenix to New York or from, you know, California to wherever. I've got a lot of constituents who have very, very, very serious issues. Again, somebody who's going to be kicked out of their home because they can't afford or can't find property insurance, can't pay a mortgage because you don't have the insurance, and it's going to be homeless. What are we doing? But we're sitting here talking about guns and abortion and tort reform and all of the other terrible, awful monsters that are going to help him in his run for higher office. And our beautiful great state, the one that I was born in, the one that I'm proud to serve in, is going to be left holding the bag with what he has created. When we come back, our investigation into broken classrooms. Stay with us.